We're back, Papi. It's an election year. We're getting political today. God, I can't wait. Let's vote. But first, <clears throat> you know the worst part about elections is the stupid signs, all the people's faces that I see up. And then you go to parties and you see them, like, that's that fool on the sign. Now I don't <laughs> want to talk to them. It's like, yeah. ah, I was going to ask me to vote for him. Yeah. Okay, so I got a good one for you to start. Okay. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about political parties today. <clears throat> but before we get to that, if you could be president during any era in American history, what era would you choose and why? Now the country's been semi-chaotic all this extent. Everything I've read, I would say today, the today. Biden presidency. Uh, 2020s. The, the, yeah, the, tw the 2020s, just because like, the, the, the Cold War is over, uh -huh. so we don't have that threat anymore. We don't have to worry about the Nazis or the Japanese. And then before World War One and World War Two, mm -hmm. um, we were we had a very uh, we actually had a weak military. And of course, before before that, it was the Civil War, and and before the Civil War, we were super weak militarily. We yeah. became the number one in the world, number one country in the world militarily, militarily. economically around 1900, militarily around World War One. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely pick today as as yeah, let's just let's roll in there and just n not screw it up. <laughs> You know what? I, yeah. I thought about it. I'm like, I think the era that I would least likely want to uh -huh. be president is now. Now? Yeah. It's just, there's just more, th I feel like uh -huh. there's more threats. Yeah. Like, f not just foreign wise, but domestic. You said least likely. Least, I, I don't want to, I would, I would not want to be president right now. If I could be president, I think the era that I'd want to be president is the one with, it seemed like there was less drama and more party. What was that? 1920s. The good golden point. age. Yeah, the roaring the 20s. The roaring 20s, you know the jazz age. And you had three lazy fair presidents. So literally, their goal is to sit around and not screw it up. So like it's that, just that like, was hey, philosophy. Yeah. That's a great time. Yeah. It's a good time to party. And we're talking about parties today because it is an election year, a presidential election year. And uh, actually, fun fact today, February 27th, uh -huh. 22nd, is George Washington's birthday. Oh. The GOAT. We'll talk about him ah. a little bit as well. But basically, this all... Big Georgie. We've, we've been talking about like election year type stuff, but one of the things that I noticed, and you and I can kind of uh, agree on this, like we have friends that are on all sides of the political spectrum, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But one of the things that I, I've heard several times, and I'm, I don't know if you've heard this before, but, oh, I, I, vote, uh, I vote Republican because... This is the party that freed the slaves. Uh huh. And I'm just like, like that's an uh, argument to vote Republican. I'm like, that's why you. That's that's why I'm like, that's interesting. I'm like, hey, to each their own. It's either that's like, why they vote Republican, or it's they're trying to give you a reason why you mm. should vote Republican. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, so and don't get me wrong, they, we're not here today to bash like no. anybody because no. we bash everybody. Uh, yes, right? we're equal opportunity, right? As, as good as best we can. <laughs> yeah, but. It's it's more about looking at the how, how did political our current political party system evolve to what it is today? Yeah. How like we have two major parties today, the Republican and the Democratic Party. Uh -huh. We have a few other minor parties, but they really don't get as much attention as nobody cares as about a big two, right? Yeah. How did we come to be where we are today? Uh -huh. So it's like, hey, let's nerd out a little bit and let's kind of highlight this evolution and uh -huh. where do we start? You got to yeah, start so from the beginning, right? With the goat. Got to start from the beginning. And we get with old Georgie. And it really started with his farewell address because he George actually advised, yeah. not only did he advise no excessive debt, and we're teetering on that today, mm -hmm. no peacetime treaties. And we kind of have that. We have something called NATO, yeah. which is a defensive measure, but, you know, whatever. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization. But you have to keep in mind, since World War II, we are definitely in different times. We're not only the number one country in the world versus when George Washington was in power, mm -hmm. our military was nothing. Uh, uh, you know, so and when you say number one, we're talking about militarily, economically, we're big uh -huh. influencers on that on that front. Uh huh. So so no peacetime treaty. So we're in a totally different time. We run the world, but not by, hey, you belong to us, you belong to us, you belong to us. It's more like I've heard people complaining about why are we giving a billion dollars to Egypt, build jar to Israel, building dollars. And my argument would be, well, they're called bribes. That way, people 
could go along with what we say. There's a reason yeah. we protect but so that's, many But that's countries. me thinking it is in American elitists. So, you know, here we are. But Not, what, it, what, what was George Washington's point about political yeah. parties? So the, so the third one was, of course, no political parties, that it would really divide the nation. Mm -hmm. And you see that today. Um, it was James Madison wrote that. Is it Alexander Hamilton wrote, wrote about that is in Federalist Number Ten mm -hmm. because people are arguing that political factions could ruin the country. Like we, this country, the thirteen colonies, the original. Yeah. Everybody's too different, all the way from Maine all the way down to Georgia. Everybody's way too different, and they have too many different political ideas for us to to jealous all together. There's different things that have that affect yeah. their uh -huh. their local economy so, so their interests might be a little bit different so then. things that gel us together are one the house of representatives because it's represented by district and the second one is the electoral college yes. so uh presidential elections won't be dominated by the cities okay. and you see that today right so and so the other thing about george washington is it's an interesting note to make is that in the constitution there was nothing that said, oh, yeah. you serve two terms and you're done. Yeah, a president serves two terms or up to ten it's years. It's just there was nothing set in stone in the constitution. You're right. I actually, have the huh? I have the constitution here actually, and I oh. kind of I have a tie here. It's, yeah, it's, no, the, I, it's the U.S. Constitution, but yeah. nowhere in this constitution uh -huh. does it, it say. There it is. We, we the people. We the people. Nowhere in the oh. constitution does it say that you have to give up. No, at that it, time, it was, at that time. Yeah. Now we do have so, that. So right. G, GW elected in uh, 1789. He got reelected in uh, wait, 1790. And, and he served his first term. He, he won his second term. By the way, the only president ever to win the office unanimously. Unanimously. Monroe almost did it, but they gave one electoral point to oh, somebody else. Right. But uh, so that's that's fun fact. But 1890, 1790, he stepped down. And a cool, cool quote I'd heard from this book that I'm re reviewing um, is King George III found out that George Washington stepped down. You know, King George III, we defeated him in the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. He heard that George Washington was stepping down from power. Who does says, He's Who the hell does he? He's stepping down from power. This guy must be the greatest man in the history of the world. And I thought that's, that's fascinating. So we have a system, a tradition of a peaceful transfer of power. And this has like always been a thing for the United States. That's what tradition. actually makes us great. Uh, you know, but there's only one, been one time where there was some resistance of that peaceful transfer of power ever. But you know, but yeah, yeah so, so we so digress. That that's in it. It's uh, power corrupts, and that's a cool power actually. Power corrupts cool, absolutely. It's that's actually and absolutely. a cool American tradition of people stepping down and giving up a transfer of power. But there's only been three people ever that challenged the two-term limit, and that was Ulysses Grant, which the guy was had a horrible presidency anyway. So his party, Republican Party, didn't re-nominate him. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, the most popular third party candidate ever, 1912. Mm -hmm. He came in second place, which is the most successful third party candidate ever. And the third one, is, of course, is FDR, yeah. which he actually won four terms. That's interesting. Uh -huh. And, we and they changed it right after him. And if he wouldn't have passed away when he did, uh -huh. would he have continued to run for more? Who it's knows? A it's a great question. Who knows? But let's nerd out a little bit. I like when you talk history. How did, how did our parties evolve? Let's give like, so a political party for dummies. Yeah, so th the two Go. biggest rivals was Alexander Hamilton in the beginning. Alexander Hamilton, which is uh, the father of a natural debt, one of the first three people in George Washington's cabinet. It was uh, Alexander Hamilton, Secretary of Treasury, Henry Knox, Secretary of War, and Thomas Jefferson, Secretary of State, who advises on foreign affairs, right? Mm -hmm. But the two big guys, of course, Alexander Hamilton and, and, and uh, Thomas Jefferson, two of the brightest minds like ever in the history of our country. And they so just what, all pa what be political fathers. party did they... So at the beginning, it, it, it wasn't, there wasn't a, a political party, but it sort of slowly started shifting towards the Federalists who want more central power, more power to the federal government, and the Anti-Federalists, which wants more state power. Less government control, yeah. give the states the ability to decide so, more things for themselves. So the thing is, there's more state power. We've actually had that system before twice. Once was called the Articles of Confederation when we first declared independence, because mm. our regular constitution didn't kick in till 17. We didn't write till 1787. Okay. We declared independence 1776, right? So, um, so it's, it's the Anti-Federalists wanted more state power. We had that under the Articles of Federation. Didn't work. Got rid of it. Have our current constitution today. And the second time was called the Confederate States of America. Mm. More state power. And both plans went 
really <laughs> bad. Yeah, really <laughs> bad. Yeah. So we are somewhere in the middle. We are not England, but we are not just a bunch of sovereign states so either. So even early on, we had sort of this this debate as to where power should yeah. uh, be. To the state. And it's always to, a great it's argument. It's always, always a great argument. argument. Yeah. And you can identify pros and cons in both, but mm -hmm. where did we go from there? So, so from there, it was the era of good feelings, one presidential party, but things started shifting. Uh, I would say with Andrew Jackson. Mm. The seventh president of the United States, he became the first Democratic president. And in fact, fun fact, um, he was called a I don't know if you, you guys remember, but the Democratic Party mascot is mm. a donkey. Yeah. Is a freaking donkey. How did that? So come? how did that come about? It was uh, Andrew Jackson was called a jackass so much, <laughs> you know, and it's almost like uh, we were talking about We've earlier about any jackass presidents. Bullies embracing the tag, and so he took the jackass label and he says, "I'm gonna." That's gonna be the mascot of the Democratic Party. That's interesting. So that's well, it's kind of like taking the. Yeah. The ammunition away from a bully, yeah, right? When they yeah. make fun of you, well, if you make fun of yourself, old Hickory. what else do they have? Like, kind of like in that scene in Eight Mile yeah. where, where Eminem, he's like, he goes on stage and he just basically, he berates himself. He tells all the things yeah. that the yeah. other guy's gonna uh -huh. say, yeah. and, and he takes it away from him. Yeah. And then that guy comes up, he's like, I ain't got nothing to do. Yeah. So that's how the Democratic. Yeah. Adopted very tactful the right. party that uh, adopted the the donkey. That's yeah. I never knew that. So now we fast forward. Uh, so now the Democratic becomes starts slowly starts to become the party of the South. Mm -hmm. When I talk about the South, we're talking about slavery, right? Slave states. So slowly, slave states on the, the Andrew Jackson Democratic Party started to become a more conservative party in the South mm -hmm. and all across. The, there were Democrats in the North too, but then uh, so there was an anti-Jackson party that formed, and that was called the Whig Party. Whig it. And that won a couple of. Pr Did they wear wigs? Huh? Is that why? Uh, no, it was named after something in the British Parliament about the way. I think I can't remember if it was a liberal or conservative stance. It was or a stance against slavery. I think I, I forgot what it was. Something about yeah. the Whig Party. Uh, but that's why they took it upon them. And uh, the first president ever to win that was uh, his name is uh, William Henry Harrison. <laughs> Our, at that time, our oldest elected president, and people would criticize him. It's like, dude, he's old, too old to be president. Sound like a familiar argument, right? <laughs> we have freaking weekend at, weekend at Bernie's himself in Bernie, charge today. President Bernie. Yeah, weekend at uh. Bernie's today. So, so the, you know. He's, Biden is not the first president to go through that. So William Henry Harrison is going through that. He got inaugurated, but there was a snowstorm, a blizzard going on in Washington. So when he was inaugurated, he had to give a speech. Mm -hmm. And they told him, dude, you should wear a coat. It's a freaking blizzard. I'm like, no, 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 I got to show him I'm tough. So he went out, showed that he was tough, gave the longest speech in presidential history without a coat. And then guess what he got? He got pneumonia. Oh, Literally 30 days later, he's dead. First president ever to die in office. Uh, 1840 or 1841. Uh, my mom has had a point then always tell me wear a jacket then <laughs> that's <laughs> right that's, that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. the old anyway. wife tell a hey, well tell so, that to Wayne Henry Harrison tell so, that to the Whig party so my question is did the Civil War change the way political parties then ran or, 1856 or was it a product of 1856 William Sewer is the first Republican candidate to actually run for president 1856 18, he did not win four years before Civil War yeah four years did not win. Then you have another se uh, senator from Illinois start to come up. Mm. Uh, you know, some guy named Abraham Lincoln, right? Honest mm. Abe. And Honest in 1860, Abe. The, South, it, the South thinks that he's going to come in and he's going to get rid of slavery, which it wasn't his plan. He famously said, uh, my main goal is to keep the country together. So if it means to get rid of slavery, I'll do it. If he means to get rid of slavery, I'll do it. So mm. that, that wasn't his goal. A lot of people give him credit for that. But that was not his goal. His goal is to keep the country together, you right? You know what's interesting about Lincoln, though? Yeah. There is, like, an argument when I, we kind of got into some primary source documents that actually question whether Lincoln was a racist or not. Uh -huh. and I was like, oh, but he freed the slaves. How yeah. can he be? Yeah. Hey, Yeah. you decide. I okay. mean, I, I saved dogs from the dog pound before. You know, it doesn't mean you see them as equals. Hmm. So a lot of people have, they make that argument. Oh, I, see, I helped a black guy once. I'm like... You know, it doesn't mean you don't believe one race is better than another. It's like, I'm not racist. Yeah. I voted for Obama. That's right. I've heard that before. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, we can yeah, so I'm we a black can, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have the Civil War go off. Uh, the Union breaks apart. We fight. 
So, so at the time, the Republican Party was actually the anti-slavery party, mm. which is actually not the conservative party you at see today. Time. So they, tell they, us about how back the then they yeah. were more of a federalist, more of a central government party. So they were seen as the radicals. The radical liberals was the re original Republican Party. So he got elected and Southern Democrats were so scared of him that they said, if this guy gets elected, we're leaving the union. So on 11 ballots in the South, he wasn't even on those ballots. To, you couldn't even vote for him in the South. In so 11 ballots. Win? Because there was enough electoral votes in the, in the North. Population was up in heavily in the North. Uh -huh. So Big cities. What you're saying is the original, the founding of the Republican Party was more of a radical, liberal. Centralized, federalist government. Yes. Interesting. So yes. we fast forward to what? Today. <laughs> Now, completely, completely but different. There's when did that happen? Where is this? Because so we, we're talking about, we saw some like some polls that was done by the Pew yeah. uh, Research Center. Uh, so historically, the after, after the Civil War, the, the African Americans, we talked about it, right? They always voted Republican because mm -hmm. Repu Republicans freed the slaves. But then Dean started getting wishy washy right around after Lincoln Reconstruction to where the Republican and Democratic parties kind of looked, started looking the same. Okay. It's the era of forgotten presidents. So that's, they refer to that as the Gilded Age. And if you've never seen it, the men who built America, oh, oh that documentary, dude, bad oh, yes. uh, uh, Who is it? Um, J.P. Morgan, Andrew Carnegie, uh, Rockefeller, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, okay. and so the, these like titans of industry, they really helped build it, and they have such crazy wealth, like the richest guys in the history of the world, and this is in late 1800s, that they actually start buying off politicians legally, oh, of course. Okay. So does that sound familiar? Does that sound like today? <laughs> so th this I, is where we begin to see the rise of big businesses, yeah. right? Big companies. Yeah, and stuff we, like we that. started getting rich. In 1865, we were the fifth most industrialized country in the world. By 1900, we're number one. Number one. Went from five to one in 35 years. That's okay. a quick, and it's all owed to those guys. And so, turn of the century, who would you say is a big influence on the change? Because 1896, McKinley gets elected. And but he's backed by big money. McKinley, the Republican, mm. is backed by big money, backed by all these titans of industry. Because you started seeing these movements uh, from the Democrats, William Jennings Bryan, and they're starting to preach against these big business guys, like breaking up monopolies and stuff like that. So the big business guys start pouring money into the Republican Party. McKinley gets elected in 1896. Mm. McKinley gets elected again in 1900, but then McKinley dies, and then. Teddy Roosevelt comes in. Now, even though Teddy Roosevelt was Republican, yeah. ideally, he's more of a Democrat. In fact, in 1903, when there was a coal miner strike, he stepped in and told all the coal miner owners, if you guys don't negotiate with these guys, make a deal with, the, with these workers, I'm going to take over the coal mines myself. The government. Big government. Right, big government. So even though Teddy, he was Republican at the time, those were more modern, like, Democratic kind of swings uh, okay. kind of thing, right? So Teddy was unique. Then Taft came in, and then Wilson came in, and all three. Uh, Wilson was the actual Democrat, mm -hmm. but they were all progressive era, um, a against big businesses for the regular guy. Yeah. Progressive era. But, but then, then we see a big shift to your argument where <laughs> you would like to be president of the United States. Yes. Right? Uh huh. Nineteen twenties. Mm -hmm. This is where we see good times roll in. Post World War One, laissez faire, baby, let it be. Women can vote now, uh -huh. but prohibitions in place, no, no yeah. alcohol, yeah, etc. So yeah, a lot of people know that, but a big re two big reasons why alcohol is banned. One is because men get drunk, come home and beat their wives. So that the big women's movement mm -hmm. that actually got them to vote is now pushing the, a ban on alcohol. The women's temperance movement, right? A lot of the alcoholism is seen as an immigrant problem. Mm -hmm. So with Germans, B I E R, beer. Oh yeah. And the Irish, which everybody freaking hates the Irish back then, oh, yeah. like hates on the same level as America hates African Americans. That's how much they hated the Irish, right? Which is Irish whiskey. So they see this as immigrant problems. So that's big. And then the third one is, of course, you're not with Jesus if you're drunk. Yeah. And so those three big movements colliding at the same time got rid of alcoholism. But then there's whatever. But I mean, you, you talk about boom times, baby. Yeah. Boom times. But then something happened. Mm -hmm. And this is where we see begin to see. We, we talked about. This, this paradigm shift in the 1930s, the Great Depression kicks in, the stock market crash, unemployment skyrockets or whatever. Most of the, of, and when we look at the, the demographics of voting, uh, and we were looking at some modern day yeah. ones uh, recently. Yeah. When you look at the, the African American vote, predominantly pre-1936, it was all Republican. 
And African then, Americans from, voted, re, voted Republicans because they freed the slaves. Yeah. And then, then in 1936, boom, you see like an almost yeah. flip flop. The African American yeah. vote switches to the Democrats. Yeah. And ever since 1936, the the, the African American vote Overwhelming is majority. overwhelmingly Democrat, Democrat. Even till this day. Uh -huh. And then like if you look at different, uh, dem like the, the Latino vote, the white vote, the, you know, Afri African American and Native American vote, we, it's broken down into different groups. Yeah. Like m many of these minority groups pri more primarily yeah. vote Democratic. And then it's like, what? Why and then and then you have the the more Weddells in the South. They always voted Democrat. They were like, mm -hmm. even in the 60s, they were known as, as like the Dixiecrats because they, you know, they wanted to keep segregation and stuff like that. So in 1964, they passed a, the Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. In 1965, they passed the Voting Rights Act. And when Lyndon Johnson had those passed, the Democrat from Texas mm -hmm. and a grew up poor. And he, he was an educator. He's a teacher. Oh, oh, really? Lyndon Johnson was a teacher. I, I, yeah, I and know bo that. both of those those acts that he passed were centered around the, the basis of you can't discriminate helping African Americans so based on race ethnicity yeah. religion or, or ba ethnic background yeah. and made it illegal to segregate yeah. completely so he famously said when they passed that we have lost the south in other words the Democrats who the south always voted Democrat mm -hmm. since the days of Civil War once they passed that a hundred years later after the Civil War is over he famously said we have lost the south so now in the South, now the South votes most Republican. I and think the last Democrat to mm -hmm. win, the, win the Southern vote was uh, Clinton because he's from Arkansas. Oh. But anyway. So, so primarily, uh, or the, the South predominantly voted Democrat mm -hmm. before that. Yeah. The South. Yeah. You know, from Alabama to, to Georgia, uh -huh. Florida. But what do we see happen post-1964? Post-1964? Uh, well, you could f you you see kind of more of the same now. You see the modern political parties settle. Mm -hmm. You see the Republicans as still 1980 Reagan rolls in the lazy fair guy, kind of more the 1920 stuff, the religious stuff that you saw with the Republican Party in the 1920s, mm -hmm. um, and and then you saw it again with Bush, and then you see it again come back with Trump. And Trump is a whole different thing of Republican Party. It's more like the Trumpism type. And, deal. and you're kind of I don't, I'm curious mm -hmm. to see like 10 years from now. It's yeah. always interesting to go and kind of yeah. back 10 years. Yeah like how the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, how different it will be. Yeah. And we started seeing that in like 2008, this, 2009. This episode is about the evolution, evolution. of political parties. Because and we sell a Tea Party. It's happening right, right now. Yeah, yeah, 2008, So you're starting to see an evolution or uh -huh. like slowly, but like even from, from now to four years ago. It's happening. It, it, yeah, I think it's it's Traditional it's Republicans are retiring like Mitt Romney. He's like, man, these, we've lost the party to these guys. Uh, who else was it? Uh, the, the guy, the guy from Bakersfield. He was just speaker of the house. But I can't remember his name. The Mc, uh, Mc, 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 Mc something. McDonald's. No, no. McDonald's. No. <laughs> yeah, close, <laughs> close enough, right? I don't know the name. But it was, he, he just got thrown out as speaker of the house. But he's from Bakersfield. But he's a Republican, and he's going to retire. So you see more traditional Republicans start to fade away. So the Republican Party is evolving. The Democratic Party is kind of yeah because fractured. So like you're lo like so we're we, see, we are seeing an evolution yeah. because we looked at stats right uh -huh. and oh yeah what, yeah, yeah. what yeah. factors affect voter turnout uh -huh. and we looked at like not just like the your background but education level and so uh -huh. oh yeah what yeah, was yeah. Uh, what would pull up the uh, the I think it's that one uh, mm -hmm. age how age impacts voter turnout mm -hmm. like. And I think it was, um, they, they did a, this poll where it looked at what is the age, uh, like from the ages of 50 and up, more than 50% of the registered voters that lean Republican are over 50%, mm -hmm. like 57%, yeah. Yeah. something like, like, wow, that's significant. But then you look at the uh, Democratic leaning and it barely 50%, bit, yeah. right? Yeah. But then you also have like education and so what are the percentages of voters who are college level or high school level and it's and it shows that those who attend college level and up they, they to, usually vote more, democrat vote yeah. democrat yeah and it's like why but now you're seeing a shift and i i w when you showed that to me i do i i was blown away like wow you young cats are i'm interested more. to see and I, uh -huh. in your opinion Mm -hmm. I guess this will be where we end before we get to the best of the week. Do you think in the near future, in our lifetime, are we going to see a new political party born? 
we have two major parties, but do you think there's going to be a new party that's going to If to any pick? new party is born, it will be something out of the Republican Party. Mm. So it'd be like uh, when the Whig Party evolved into the Republican Party. Okay. Or when... Because uh, I think... I think yeah. I think it honestly... E it, even the Democratic Republican Party, uh, the party of Thomas Jefferson, eventually evolved to... Uh, one, so one fracture came out of that, and they became uh, the Jackson Democrats. Mm. Um, so, so we've seen these evolutions before, and uh, you know you're you're possibly seeing one now. So this can be super interesting, especially when Trump happen. and Biden finally go away. That then it's going to get very entertaining. Speaking of Trump and Biden, yeah, best of the week. Oh, best of the week. Okay, I had a few. You go first. Oh, yeah. here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. All right, baby. Ready? Yeah, you, you know what? I'm going to go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to defer. I win, but I defer. Well, go ahead. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, so uh, even though I'd, I'd love to go into the, we're, we're starting uh, in my class curriculum, Rich Dad, Poor Dad this week. Um, I, I know he's a bit of a conspiracy theorist, but man, some of the simple concepts are wonderful. I'm going to focus on this. My niece, uh, just a few days ago, she got accepted to UCSD Medical School. Oh, and she's been wanting to do this since she was like super little. She is an absolute machine. She passed, actually in high school, she went to Tory Pines, passed nine AP tests, eight of them with a five, and that's the highest score, four of them, and, and just one with a four, and that was AP Chem. But she's always been this absolute machine, even at, at her undergrad at UCSD, she did a master's program at UCSD, uh, she's done, done some clinical work kind of off the table. Cheers to that. She's a freaking, she's an absolute machine. Hey. So, yeah, we're all excited. Big and time for the family yeah, we, we, so. we, she, she just happened to be staying at my house. Um, when she, found w out. when she found out, so her, my wife and I went, ran to Ramey's, and we got a big freaking steak. Oh, I think it's in your pictures. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, got a big steak. Mom, and take care of you tonight. And so we got that, and it's a little awesome. bubbly, and we bubbled up, baby. That's what awesome. you got? To me, best of the week, I was going to say the Trump shoes, yeah. staying on topic, right? Oh, yeah. But then I saw the Biden shoes. Woo! Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that. Yeah. I need. I need to get a pair of each one of those. Just, think, just think, because I think it's hilarious. I think the like Trump shoes are retailing at like three ninety nine, right? Like four hundred bucks. Yeah. I'm like, and the Biden shoes are probably retailing at twenty. They'll probably pay you yeah. to wear those. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? We should get a pair of each of those, just because I think <laughs> they're both. Dude, like, that it means that the straps. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's quicker. Like, it's, it's gold, baby. I think yeah. you run faster with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh god, yeah. So like I, the Kia I flyers. Saw that, I started cracking no. up and just saw yeah. the memes that go with it. They're like Jordans for eighty year olds, right? Yeah. Make you jump higher or get out of bed quicker. I'm in. I want to build a shrine so this yeah to me Hoopa. best of the week the the trump biden shoes yeah you know i'm not ever gonna pay that much money for a pair of shoes but i thought it was hilarious to see uh both of them come out i'm it's probably gonna be a like an snl maybe we something. could check with our budget see if uh see if the producers <laughs> see if our producers let us buy those you know tax uh, write-offs right anyways anyways on a, on a good it, note that's what we end. we did it yeah all right another good one get out and vote yeah oh man Perfect, 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 perfect